Hi everyone, my name is Heidi Peck and I'm a clarinet player with the Akron Symphony. Today I will be discussing the clarinet and giving a demonstration. Um, the clarinet is a member of the woodwind family. In the woodwind family there is the flute, the oboe, the clarinet, and the bassoon. We all sit together in a section in the orchestra right behind the strings. So if you ever go to an orchestra concert, we are there behind the string section. Um, clarinets can be played in a lot of different venues. Uh, they are played in bands. You'll see them in marching bands. They are in orchestras and you can also play jazz with them. So it's a very popular instrument that a lot of people like to play. Um, they are usually made of wood. Professional instruments typically are, although you can get plastic clarinets and those are typically for those who are beginners. It's a little easier to play and to get the sound out when you're first starting. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the different sections of the clarinet. We have five different parts. So there is a bell on the bottom, a lower joint, an upper joint, a barrel, and this is my mouthpiece. Okay, and on my mouthpiece, I have a reed and a ligature. So the reed and the ligature are very important to the clarinet. If I take them off, I just have an empty hole here in the mouthpiece, and if I blow into it, I get nothing but air. So I need this little reed, which is made out of cane. It goes from thick to thin. This thin part is very, very fragile. It's easy to break. A lot of times beginners will break the reed or chip it, and once the reed is broken, then that's pretty much the end of it. So you wanna keep your reeds uh, in a nice little case and keep them safe. So this is my reed and I need this to make sound. And this is my ligature that holds the reed onto the mouthpiece. Okay, so the reed, you wanna wet the end of it before you play. So some people soak it in a little tub of water or you can just simply put it in your mouth and get it wet that way, which is what most people do. Okay, so I'm going to put it on my mouthpiece, and as you can see, there's a hole there. So the reed covers up the hole, and all the ligature does is just hold it on there. Just sort of strap it down and make sure it doesn't move around while I'm playing. Okay, so I'm going to tighten it up. There we go. And now there's my reed on my mouthpiece. Okay, so now if I play, it sounds like... So, if we're going to play the clarinet, we talk about our embouchure, which is how your mouth is positioned around the mouthpiece. So, you take your lower lip and you bend it over your bottom teeth. It makes a cushion, so that cushion protects your teeth from the, the mouth, the reed. And then your top teeth go directly on the mouthpiece. So, a lot of people have a... Um, a little pad here on the top of their mouthpiece to protect their mouthpiece from their teeth from scratching it. Um, and then once I have all that, I take my lips and I put it around them like a straw so that no air is leaking out, ideally, right? So it's like this. I also pull my chin down and that helps with making a beautiful sound. Okay, the way that you tune with the clarinet is this barrel and you move it in or out depending on what you need to do. So if I'm sharp, I will pull it out. And if I'm flat, I push it back in so that I'm listening to other players and I adjust so that I am in tune with them as well. All right, so there's a lot of keys on the clarinet and these help us play all the, the notes that are, that are out there, the sharps and the flats and the naturals. So that would be a chromatic scale. So I'm going to play that for you right now. So this uses all the keys on the clarinet. If I play a basic C scale, it would sound like this.
arpeggio there at the end. Okay, so there's also, there's a technique in music called a trill, and that is where there's a note, a starting note, and it goes up and down very quickly to the note above it. And this is written in a lot of music, and it sounds something like this. And so I'm going to play a few excerpts for you and do a few demonstrations. And there's some trills in there, so you can listen for them and see if you can find the trills. Okay, so we're going to talk about playing soft and loud. I'm going to play a few excerpts that are loud and soft. So if I play loud, I'm going to blow faster, and that will make it louder. If I want to play softer, I'm going to blow slower. So I am going to switch clarinets. I have an A clarinet and a B flat clarinet. So they are basically the same, except the A clarinet is a little bit bigger and it, it sounds a little bit lower. Um, and most professional orchestral musicians have both clarinets. You need them to play orchestra music. And the reason for this is a little bit of a complicated history, but it has to do with how the instrument developed and partly with acoustics. So um, I'm going to switch and take my mouthpiece off and I'm gonna play my A clarinet for these next two excerpts, okay? And if I play this a little bit, you'll hear that it sounds basically like the other one, but slightly different. Okay, so the first excerpt that I'm going to play is a loud excerpt, and it is Capriccio Espanol by the composer Rimsky-Korsakov. of something loud and now we're going to change speeds and I'm going to do a clarinet solo from Pines of Rome by the composer Respighi. So those are two completely different styles and excerpts. So I'm going to move on. Let's talk about um, tonguing. So when you tongue on the instrument, I'm gonna go back to my B flat clarinet. When you tongue on the instrument, you use your tongue and you touch the very tip here of that reed. The reed is very, very important. And the faster you can tongue, the better you can do. Uh, the clarinets don't have the option of double tonguing, which is a feature that a lot of the other woodwind instruments have. So we are all single tonguing and making the best of our world. So also when you tongue, um, there's a, a notation in music and it's a dot over a note and it's called staccato and it means separated. A lot of people interpret it as short but that is something that you're going to use your tongue to play. So I'm going to play Mendelssohn's Scherzo from A Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> short and tonguey. So let's move on. Uh, I'm going to talk about the role of the clarinet in the orchestra. Um, so there are passages, and there are also in passages in band, if you play in the band as well, that are called tutti, and that's where everybody plays, versus a solo where 
clearly, it's just your instrument. So in the 2D sections uh, in orchestra music, a lot of times the clarinet cannot be heard over the brass. Um, so you're playing along and you're playing the melody, but you can't necessarily be heard. And then on the flip side, you get to play beautiful melodies that just feature the clarinet. So I'm going to play the opening of uh, Beethoven 8, the first movement. And the opening starts out loud with the tootie, and then it goes into a softer solo, okay? So, if you heard the difference, there's a loud part and then there's a beautiful lyrical part right after that. I'm going to play it one more time. So, you have to be ready at any point to play beautifully and have a beautiful solo. So I'm going to do a little bit more in Beethoven 8 and play another clarinet solo. This is further along in the, or in the excuse me, symphony. It's the third movement and there is a clarinet solo there. And I'm just going to play a little, a little snippet of that. clarinet can play beautiful solos, making it a very popular instrument. So I thank you very much for watching my video, and I hope you do wonderful with the clarinet.